Hello everyone, my name is Mani Yasha from Dream Vision Creations. I want to thank you for joining me on my newest episode, How to Carve Your Own DVC Flex Foam Head. First, we're going to start out going over the tools. Um, whenever you carve your head, it'll go from the solid state to a hollow shell. So this is how your flex foam head will look. It can be a stationary mouth or a moving mouth. First important tool, cut resistant gloves. Usually they're mechanic gloves. You can get them at your, any local Home Depot or Lowe's supply store. You'll need a pair of scissors, relatively sharp, to be able to cut out chunks of foam. A adjustable box cutter blade with breakaway blades. And if you don't feel confident enough for precision work, you can use an X-Acto knife. And a black Sharpie marker. Okay, let's just jump right into it. So whenever you get your flex foam head, like I said, it's going to be a very solid foam shape. Nothing's going to be carved out yet except for the open mouth, which will actually be edited in our future models. We won't have the open cavity. Um, <clears throat> the first thing you'll notice for flex foam heads is they are not all soft material. This is actually a two-part flex foam. It has a 17 outside shell, which makes it super strong and tough and it keeps its shape better. So. Even if you try to like crush it and squish it, it'll go back to its shape. It's also really good if you want to do a moving mouth because then it'll have the proper structure needed for the jaw to move precisely as well as hold in the teeth and not be weighed down and flop open like this like you typically get with cushion foam heads. Uh, the label here is just to help give you a little bit of instructions on how to use our flex foam heads but you don't have to keep it on here while, when you're carving and you know finishing it up. But I'll go ahead and actually just draw a line on here and just show you how much of this you're going to be taking out. This was built on a mannequin head, which was a bit of a smaller size. So if you have a larger size head, you would take more out. If you have a smaller size, you would keep more in. So if you have like a 21 inch head like I do, which is technically child size, you would kind of stay within this barrier here of where the soft foam is, the Flex Foam 3. So first I'm going to show you here how much I take out. I tend to go a little bit wider in the cheek area because that's where your ears are. And kind of just fall along the rim here. Again, more area taken out here for the ears. That's a basic outline. One of the first things I actually start cutting out, once I get my gloves on that is, is around the eye and the mouth area. It makes it a lot easier to pop the foam wedge out whenever you have those already pre-cut. So I take my box cutter and I start first following around this line, the edge of the eye. And you can see I'm going at an angle here, kind of following that flat shape of the eye, or what the eye plate would go to say. This is going in about an inch into the foam. I'm going a little bit deeper right here, about two inches. And do the same thing for the other eye. And you'll already notice that these are now joined together, so this whole area has already been released. And then I open up the mouth and I start cutting out this back plate on the back side of the mouth, you can see that big old flat area. Oh, 
All you're doing is pretty much releasing that thick coating. Again, to make it easier to remove. So I've already released the eye plates and I've released the back of the mouth. So now I'm gonna start actually cutting out this giant wedge here. I use a lot of blade. I'm going about three to four inches of blade here. It'll be quite a bit. I'm going straight in to the foam. Okay, now the outer edge has been cut loose. If you've ever flayed a fish before, it's a very helpful tip because you're pretty much going to be just using your knife and just taking out a little bit at a time. You'll be able to feel resistance when you hit areas where there's a flex foam 17. I've already cut out and met up with the eye right there. And let's continue around. Just loosening up an extra inch of material. I was trying to meet up with those eyes. Usually I do this in my lap, so it's a little bit awkward trying to show it on camera. I've also heard that some people like to use their fingers and just literally rip out the foam. Since you don't have to worry about ripping the skin because it's a separate foam. And we're right up with the other eye here. Just cutting the cheek area. See the eyes right there. And I'm going to try to meet up this mouth port that I've cut open earlier. You'll need a lot of finger strength for all this, by the way, especially because I'm trying to pull it apart and show you all what I'm doing. So now I've got the mouth right there. But now it's time to cut into these cheeks a bit more. What's also really, really cool is once you get the forehead about four, about, I want about five inches in you can do this you can actually peel it back and then you can see exactly what you're cutting and what still needs to be cut and you can see here's the mouth right here here's part of the eye here's the other section of the eye so now you can take your blade and just Follow a nice curve. And soon you'll actually meet up where your eyes are, and that area will already be cut, so I'll just let go. Right here. Hey, okay, there's your eyes. Here's your cheek. And here is your nose. So, <laughs> I've been doing this a while. That's my little baby alien. This is my basically what I call these things because they look like every single time I take the muffins out. I call these muffins. So essentially I have this really creepy inside face, inside out face. And you'll see there's some areas where I cut a little too much. That's okay. This is when you start taking a pair of scissors and do your cleanup cutting. Just gotta even everything out. 
Now, if you're doing this like a lot of makers and you're going to line this with fabric, you don't have to make it terribly beautiful as long as it's semi even because it's all be covered up with fabric. Some of these areas right here. Okay, that was nice and smooth. Well, all considering it's nice and smooth. So now you push the head back inside out. And this will time whenever you like test on your head. And see how it fits. If you have a larger size head, you can do one of two things. You can remove, I'll actually mark it on here, some of this upper forehead area. So you'd remove about right just behind the eyebrows you remove this chunk here and that will actually just be the in inside liner up against your fur fabric so it gives you more space for your head if you have a wider size head you can also remove more of this foam on the sides this does stretch so if you remove this upper plate it will also allow for it to get wider too and you can also possibly remove this jaw holder right here that's also extra options. If you want to make this into a moving mouth, you just take your box cutter and carve in just a little corner of the mouth. Just move that part and it follows cut line. I would recommend before you actually completely separate the bottom jaw from the upper to, all, to attach this to your liner first with glue. You can use hot glue. But this is how you would get that moving jaw. Of course, it would be like more like separating like this because it'll be completely detached. Right now it's still attached to the hinge here. But yeah, that's a pretty just quick upfront method of how I like to carve out my flex foam heads. If you have any questions, just let me know. And again, thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I hope you enjoy more in the future.